The cornerstone of the market is trade, not money. A critical examination of trade, scarcity, inequality, and alternatives. The concept of trade is one of the most fundamental aspects of human society, transcending time and culture. From ancient barter systems to modern global economies, trade is often seen as a simple exchange of goods or services between two parties. However, a closer examination reveals that trade is far from a benign mechanism. It operates based on the principle of scarcity, involves tactics of manipulation, perpetuates inequality, and ultimately, may even contribute to covert violence within societies. The structure of trade and its connection to inequality leads us to question the fundamental organization of our current economy and whether alternative systems, such as a resource-based economy driven by scientific abundance, could offer a more harmonious and equitable solution for humanity. To explore this argument, we will examine the role of trade in human society, its inherent link to scarcity, the deceptive tactics often involved, and the long-term social consequences, culminating in a comparison of primate societies that offers insights into the benefits of abundance versus scarcity-driven environments. Trade, not money, is the cornerstone of the market. Many individuals mistakenly believe that money is the cornerstone of the market. While money has indeed become a ubiquitous tool for facilitating trade, it is not the foundation upon which markets are built. The true cornerstone of the market is trade itself, the exchange of goods, services, or resources between parties. Before the invention of money, human societies engaged in barter systems, wherein one party would exchange a tangible good or service for another. This basic form of trade existed long before the formalized currency systems we see today and is at the heart of what defines a market. Trade is not inherently reliant on a monetary system, but rather on the notion that both parties have something the other desires. The introduction of money has merely simplified the process of exchange by providing a standardized medium of value. However, the underlying principle remains unchanged. Trade is about the exchange of resources. Therefore, while money may dominate discussions of modern economics, it is important to recognize that trade is the essential function driving these interactions. Trade and scarcity. At the core of trade lies the concept of scarcity. Scarcity refers to the limited availability of a resource, be it food, water, labor, or material goods. When a resource is scarce, it becomes valuable, prompting individuals or groups to engage in trade to obtain that resource. Scarcity is the fundamental driver of market activity because it creates demand. Without scarcity, there would be no need for trade, as all goods and resources would be readily available in sufficient quantities for everyone. The scarcity of resources fosters competition among individuals and groups, as each party seeks to secure the limited goods or services they desire. This competition often leads to market interactions where participants trade items they possess in abundance for those they lack. Scarcity thus becomes the engine of trade, and without it, the market as we know it would cease to exist. However, scarcity is not always a natural condition. It is often artificially created or maintained to perpetuate trade. For example, many goods in the global economy are intentionally restricted or limited in supply to inflate their value. This manufactured scarcity creates an illusion of rarity, driving up prices and encouraging trade. In this way, Scarcity is manipulated as a tool to maintain the necessity of trade within markets. Trade as a tool of deception and covert violence. Although trade is often presented as an equitable exchange, it can also function as a form of covert violence, wherein both parties seek to exploit the other for their own gain. The idealized view of trade posits that it is a fair and balanced system where two parties exchange goods or services of equal value, leaving both better off. However, in practice, trade frequently involves manipulation, deceit, and efforts by each party to obtain the upper hand in the exchange. In every trade transaction, both parties aim to maximize their own benefit. This often leads to a subtle form of competition, where each side attempts to hide the true value of what they are offering while exaggerating the value of what they wish to receive. For example, a seller may attempt to convince a buyer that a product is more valuable or scarce than it truly is while the buyer may try to downplay the product's value to secure a better deal. In this sense, trade is not always an honest or transparent process, but one characterized by strategies of deception, aimed at gaining the upper hand. 
This covert manipulation can be seen as a form of economic violence, where one party seeks to exploit the other through underhanded tactics. In this framework, trade becomes a battleground, where the strongest or most cunning individual wins by securing the better end of the deal, while the weaker party is left disadvantaged. This dynamic is exacerbated by power imbalances between the trading parties, such as when wealthier individuals or nations trade with poorer ones. In these cases, the wealthier party often has greater leverage, enabling them to impose unfavorable terms on the weaker party, thus perpetuating inequality. The mathematical increase in inequality through trade. The very structure of trade inherently leads to the perpetuation and amplification of inequality. As previously mentioned, each party in a trade seeks to gain the upper hand in the transaction. When this occurs repeatedly in a market environment, the accumulation of wealth or resources becomes unevenly distributed. Those who consistently secure better deals amass more resources, while those who are consistently on the losing end of trades find themselves with less. Over time, this imbalance grows, creating a widening gap between the haves and the have-nots. This process can be mathematically understood as a form of positive feedback loop, where initial inequalities are magnified through subsequent trades. Consider, for example, a wealthy individual who engages in a series of trades with less wealthy individuals. Because the wealthier individual has more resources to begin with, they can afford to drive harder bargains, often securing deals that are more favorable to them. This allows them to accumulate even more wealth, which in turn gives them even more leverage in future trades. Meanwhile, the poorer individuals, who are already disadvantaged, become further impoverished as they continue to lose out in these exchanges. The result is an ever-widening gap between the wealthy and the poor. This dynamic of inequality is not limited to individual transactions, but extends to the broader market as a whole. When we consider the global economy, we see that wealthier nations or corporations often exploit poorer nations or smaller businesses in trade negotiations. This leads to the concentration of wealth and resources in the hands of a few, while the majority of the population remains in poverty. Thus, trade, rather than being a tool for equitable distribution, becomes a mechanism that systematically increases inequality. The consequences of inequality, health and violence. The growing inequality resulting from trade has profound implications for society as a whole. One of the most significant consequences is the deterioration of public health. Studies have consistently shown that societies with greater income inequality tend to experience worse health outcomes. The reasons for this are multifaceted, but they often stem from the fact that individuals in lower socioeconomic brackets have reduced access to healthcare, healthy food, clean water, and safe living environments. In addition, the chronic stress associated with poverty and economic insecurity takes a toll on both physical and mental health, leading to higher rates of illness and mortality. Inequality also fosters social unrest and violence. As the gap between the rich and poor widens, the disenfranchised population grows increasingly frustrated with their lack of access to resources and opportunities. This frustration often manifests in the form of crime, protests, and even violent conflict. Historically, societies with large wealth disparities have been more prone to revolution and social upheaval, as the lower classes seek to redress the imbalance by any means necessary. Research has shown that income inequality is one of the strongest predictors of violent crime rates. When individuals feel that they are being systematically excluded from the benefits of society, they are more likely to resort to violence as a means of survival or as an expression of their grievances. This creates a vicious cycle where inequality breeds violence, which in turn destabilizes society and further entrenches the divisions between rich and poor. Moving beyond trade, a resource-based economy. Given the inherent flaws in the current system of trade, it is worth considering whether there might be alternative models for organizing human society that do not rely on scarcity and competition. One such alternative is a resource-based economy, a concept popularized by thinkers such as Jacques Fresco, founder of the Venus Project. In a resource-based economy, goods and services are distributed based on need rather than profit, and the abundance of resources is ensured through the application of science and technology. The key premise of a resource-based economy is that scarcity is not an inevitable condition, but rather a result of inefficient or exploitative resource management. 
By using advanced technology to increase the efficiency of production and distribution, it is possible to create an environment of abundance where all individuals have access to the resources they need to live fulfilling lives. In this system, trade as we know it would become obsolete, as there would be no need to exchange goods in a world where everything is readily available. A resource-based economy would eliminate the competition and deception that characterize trade-based economies, replacing them with a system based on cooperation and shared abundance. This would not only reduce inequality but also promote social harmony, as individuals would no longer need to compete for scarce resources. Primates in abundance versus scarcity, bonobos and chimpanzees. To further illustrate the benefits of a resource-based society, we can look to our closest relatives in the animal kingdom, primates. Bonobos and chimpanzees, two species of great apes, provide a fascinating case study in how resource availability affects social behavior. Both species are genetically very similar to humans, yet they exhibit starkly different behaviors, particularly in their responses to resource scarcity or abundance. Chimpanzees live in environments where resources are relatively scarce, leading to a highly competitive and often violent social structure. Male chimpanzees, in particular, engage in aggressive behavior to secure food, mates, and territory. This competition frequently results in violence, both within and between groups, as individuals struggle to secure their share of the limited resources. In contrast, bonobos live in environments with greater resource abundance, where food is more plentiful and evenly distributed. As a result, Bonobos have developed a much more peaceful and cooperative social structure. They are known for their use of sexual behaviors as a means of resolving conflicts and maintaining social harmony, and they exhibit far less aggression than their chimpanzee counterparts. In bonobo societies, cooperation and sharing are prioritized over competition and dominance, leading to a more egalitarian and peaceful way of life. The comparison between bonobos and chimpanzees underscores the impact of resource availability on social behavior. In environments of scarcity, competition and violence become the norm, while in environments of abundance, cooperation and peace prevail. This suggests that if humans were to adopt a resource-based economy focused on abundance rather than scarcity, we could create a society more akin to that of the bonobos, where harmony and cooperation replace competition and conflict. Conclusion A New Vision for Human Society In conclusion, while trade has long been the cornerstone of human markets, it is not without its flaws. Trade operates on the principle of scarcity and often involves deception, perpetuating inequality, and contributing to social unrest and violence. As the gap between rich and poor continues to widen, the negative consequences for public health and societal stability become increasingly apparent. A resource-based economy, which prioritizes abundance through scientific and technological innovation, offers a compelling alternative to the current system. By eliminating the need for trade and fostering cooperation over competition, such a system could create a more equitable and peaceful society. The comparison between bonobos and chimpanzees further highlights the potential benefits of an abundance-based society, where cooperation thrives in the absence of scarcity. As we move forward, it is crucial to question the structures that underpin our economy and explore alternative models that prioritize human well-being and social harmony. A shift towards a resource-based economy could pave the way for a future where inequality is diminished, health is improved, and violence becomes a relic of the past.